Hi everyone, my name is Gail and today we're going to be talking about sclerotherapy. Sclerotherapy is a versatile therapy that has many uses, from varicose veins to vascular malformations. In this talk, we're going to focus on the use of sclerotherapy to treat pediatric lymphatic malformations. But keep in mind that sclerotherapy has many other uses, and much of this information will be applicable even if the procedure itself is different. In pediatrics, sclerotherapy is indicated for symptomatic low-flow vascular malformations, such as venous or lymphatic malformations, as well as for symptomatic cysts. In adults, sclerotherapy can also be used to treat vascular malformations that presented in adulthood or have continued into adulthood, as well as for varicose veins and reticular or telangiectatic veins. Absolute contraindications to sclerotherapy include allergy to the sclerosing agent, any high flow component to the lesion, acute infection of the involved area, or acute DVT. Another contraindication for young children would be contraindications for anesthesia, as most cases involving young children require anesthesia as the children are too young to cooperate with the procedure. Relative contraindications include microcystic lymphatic malformations, as these lesions are usually too small and numerous to treat effectively, as well as pregnancy and prothrombotic syndromes. A relative contraindication that's more common in adults would be severe arterial disease or compromised arterial supply. Venous and lymphatic malformations are a type of vascular anomaly composed of vascular channels and spaces. These channels are lined by vascular endothelium. A number of different sclerosing agents have been investigated, and although these agents have different primary uses, their sclerosing mechanism is similar. When introduced into the vessel or space, the sclerosing agent results in a nonspecific inflammatory reaction, which eventually results in irreversible endothelial cell damage. When the sclerosing agent is removed from the lesion, this nonspecific inflammatory reaction eventually results in fibrosis and obliteration of the space. The mechanisms by which sclerosing agents can cause endothelial cell damage can be grouped into three categories, osmotic, detergent, and irritant. Osmotic agents cause cell dehydration and cell wall destruction. Because they are rapidly diluted, their effect is highly localized. Hypertonic saline is an osmotic agent that has been in use as a sclerosant since the 1920s. The major drawback for the use of hypertonic saline is pain upon injection as well as the potential for extensive tissue necrosis if it extravasates. Detergent agents cause cell damage by protein theft denaturation, decreasing cell surface tension as well as by interacting with cell surface lipids. Detergent agents can cause damage beyond the intended site as compared to osmotic agents. Detergent agents can also be made into a foam which allows better contact with the wall of the malformation and also increases the contact time with the cell wall by displacing blood or fluid. This increases the potency of the sclerosing agent. Sodium tetradecyl sulfate, or STS, and polydocanol are two examples of detergent sclerosing agents. STS is a synthetic long-chain fatty acid that has been used for over 60 years. Polydocanol is a more moderate form of ethanol. It is known to have a low risk of complications and can also be used as a foam. Irritant or corrosive agents act by a variety of mechanisms to cause cell disruption and inflammation. Several examples frequently seen in the literature are ethanol, leomycin, doxycycline, and OK432. Ethanol is likely the most commonly used irritant sclerosing agent due to its availability, cost, and good results, as it has a 75-100% to response rate. However, ethanol has a high rate of complications, including blistering, ulceration, as well as more major complications such as pulmonary embolism. Skin ulceration is the most common complication, occurring in 21%. Bleomycin is an antineoplastic agent that has been found to be an effective sclerosin agent with response rates from 80 to 100% for venous and lymphatic malformations. It also has lower systemic toxicity, 
although cases of pulmonary fibrosis have been reported following intralesional treatment for vascular malformations. Doxycycline is a relatively inexpensive tetracycline antibiotic. It has also been extensively used for pleuridesis of malignant effusions, as well as for the treatment of post-operative lymphocytes. OK432 is a lyophilized solution with strep pyogenes particles that is thought to induce a lymphocyte inflammatory reaction. Prior to the procedure, the volume of the sclerosing agent can be estimated by estimating the volume of the lymphatic malformation. This can be done with measurements from ultrasound or MRI imaging. For example, if a lesion is estimated to be 4 by 4 by 3 centimeters, the volume of the lesion would be estimated to be 48 milliliters. Just as there's no clearly established best agent for sclerotherapy, there's no clear consensus for dosing in the literature. Below are dosing guidelines for a number of sclerosing agents, although the exact dose may vary by institution and practitioner. For our procedure, we're going to discuss sclerotherapy with doxycycline. To begin the procedure, secure access is obtained using the Seldinger technique. To do this, an access needle will be advanced into the malformation under ultrasound guidance. Before removing any fluid, a wire is advanced into the malformation. Then, under fluoroscopy, the needle will be exchanged over the wire for a pigtail catheter. Once the pigtail is within the chamber, the entire volume of the lymphatic malformation is removed. The volume of the lymphatic malformation is then replaced with doxycycline, 10 mg per milliliter, and normal saline. If there are any other major chambers of the lymphatic malformation, these steps should be repeated until all identifiable components of the lymphatic malformation have been accessed. The catheters are then closed and the sites are dressed. The patient is sent to the floor and the doxycycline solution is allowed to dwell in the lymphatic malformation for four hours. After the dwell time is complete, the doxycycline can be drained and the catheters are removed. The most common complication of sclerotherapy would be recurrence of the lymphatic malformation. Other complications may be specific to the agent used. For example, bleomycin can rarely cause pulmonary fibrosis and ethanol can cause nerve damage. Other common complications include pain, swelling, skin discoloration, ulceration, or infection. Following sclerotherapy, compression of the treated area may encourage apposition of the vessel walls and discourage recanalization, although this is not necessary. Reassessment of the patient should be performed in one to two weeks as an outpatient to assess the response of the patient to treatment and determine whether any additional treatments are needed. If further treatments are necessary, they can be performed six to eight weeks following the initial procedure. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video helpful.